Hello everyone, welcome back to The Forge. Now today we're going to be taking a look at a really cool piece of equipment that the folks over at Evolution Power Tools sent me. That is the R355 carbide tipped saw. And so we're going to put it through its paces today, cutting some different types of steel. And we're also going to take a look at the stand that they sent out with it uh, and see how, how well it works out. So with that being said, let's take a look at this stand and get to cutting some metal up. The stand does come with some of the components you see here disassembled. Uh, you got to put them on uh, these right here, the T-handles and these outer brackets. They have to be put on uh, the handle here. These right here are hex bolts that control the adjustment up and down these little arms here. Uh, Phillips head screws to hold these on. Uh, these little T-handles here, they just slide and click into place. Uh, there's several different adjustment bolts to adjust up and down. Uh, same way underneath here. You can adjust this in, out, however you want to. Uh, this is the stands to hold the steel, of course. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I like the way they did it. They didn't make it overcomplicated or super complex. So let's go ahead and take a look at these pieces here a little closer, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, here's a better shot of this stabilizer piece here. So you can see here, it's just an easy adjustment of that. You slide it up and down to fit whatever material stock. And underneath here is another one of these that controls the in and out direction. It's also clearly marked on this arm here, uh, the maximum length you should go out before it begins to affect the stabilization of the material that you're using. So I really like that too. A Little better look here at these little T-handles. These of course move these brackets here and the purpose of these little brackets and little feet here are to hold your saw of course on this table uh, and and i've already had it mounted once they do a fantastic job so let's move on to the other side and take a look at that also the adjustment on these feet here to accommodate whatever thickness you need here for whatever saw you're using simple allen wrench and you can slide it up and down to accommodate whatever you need the supplied handle to carry this table with is held on with two allen bolts and it is nice and sturdy. Uh, it doesn't feel flimsy in any way. When you pick this up, you feel like it's all there, like it's not gonna break off or pop off like some of the cheaper models will. But, so that does the job sufficiently. Much like the other side, this support piece here functions in the same way. We got a handy bolt right here that helps adjust up and down. And there's one underneath to adjust in and out. And then this piece here can also be adjusted the same way in and out as you need when you scope it out. This arm is also clearly marked to tell you when you're pulling it out too far so you don't take it out to the point that it falls off and drops your workpiece. So with that being said, let's go ahead and flip it over and take a look at the bottom side. All right, this is the bottom side of the work table here. What I like about this is these quick disconnects. As you pull this lever, it depresses this pin and allows you to easily and quickly scope the handle, scope the legs up. All four legs work that way. As for the adjustment lengthwise on the legs, it's a simple press to the button right here, turn it around, slide it up. I actually like mine set about right there. Straight, forward, quick, and easy. And just like that, our stand is ready to go. Now I'm sure on a concrete slab or something this would be a lot more stable, but my shop floor is gravel, so there's going to be a little bit of, of unevenness to it, but I have no fears or concerns about this falling over. So let's go ahead and get the saw mounted to it. We'll take a quick look at the saw, get to cutting some stuff up. And just like that, the saw's mounted down. I'll come back in and tighten these down a little. We'll be good to go. Now one thing that I really like that they included is this V-shaped clamp here. V-clamp, whatever you want to call it. It slides over here and it just basically allows for clamping of round stock, uh, round tube, or square tube, uh, square stock a whole lot easier. It makes it to where it gives it something to bite into so it's not going to just sit there and freewheel or spin. I really appreciate that they added this in there in the box. The blade lock button for when you when you change your blade out or when you first put the blade on 
is easy to find. It's right here, as well as the Allen wrench that's supplied to mount your blade is placed right in front. Easy to get to, pretty straightforward. Cover here is easily removed for changing out the blade. Easily accessible. Use the lock button, take the blade off. Pretty straightforward. I also want to add, add that I really like this handle here. I mean, they could have went with a cheap plastic or something like that, but this is obviously a metal. It's secured well, it feels nice and robust, it's easy to work. Uh, much better than on the, some of the other models I've seen. So, with that being said, I think we're at the part which most of you want to see in the first place is how it cuts material. So let's go ahead and let's get some stock found and let's get to chopping some stuff up. I also want to add before we get to start cutting, with the supplied Allen wrench you have, you can adjust it. This does have a beveling gauge with clearly marked numbers right here. And you can undo it and adjust it however you need to. Wanted to throw that in before we get started. All right, I got a piece of quarter inch by two inch flat bar in there. So let's go ahead and get it cut. That's a nice clean cut. Almost no burrs at all. Uh, if you notice, there wasn't a ton of sparks, like with most of the abrasive saws. And that's a big deal for me here because I'm not in a very big workshop and not having sparks spraying out the back, even with this guard here, not having them pieces or them sparks just spraying everywhere is great because usually here in southeast Oklahoma in the summertime it's dry. It's easy to catch things on fire and this just makes me feel better knowing that I don't have that shooting out the back in my workshop and then you know all it takes is a little bit of something smoldering and then you've got a whole shop on fire and that's a good peace of mind to have. All right, right out of the box, slapped on the table, minimal adjustments, almost a perfectly cut piece, almost perfectly square. And so that's fantastic. Like I said, I can dial it in a little bit more, but not bad. And like I said, almost no burr at all. I mean, there's a little bit of one, but nothing major. You know, usually with, a, with an abrasive saw, you have that flashing that's hanging down over the edge that you've got to grind off. I mean, I could touch this up right here with a, with a small file and move right on to whatever I'm working on. Now, something else I use a lot in the workshop when I'm forging is rebar. I use it to forge snakes. I use it to forge hooks. And so let's see how it handles this piece of rebar here. Uh, if you're on a job site doing some sort of concrete work or something, foundation work, I figure this saw would really come in handy. Uh, I've always used an angle grinder for this, but I'm the world's worst than angle grinder, so my cuts are always crooked and off. So let's see how this does. All right, and as you've seen with that, there was a little sparking, but nothing compared to what you'd normally get from an abrasive saw. And I mean, look at this. This is the cutoff piece here. Completely cool. Not hot at all. Like I said, same thing as a while ago. Minimal flashing around it. Simple cleanup. Nice looking cut. So let's move on to something else. All right, what I got here now is a very old piece of Osage Orange. Uh, as many of you know in the knife making world, uh, this is a very, very hard wood, very dense. Really does a number on carbide teeth, uh, on skill saws. Uh, does a number on jigsaw blades, bandsaw blades. So I'm going to go ahead and use this and cut it, see how well it cuts it. And uh, I really believe this is also dirty. It's covered in dirt. I really believe this saw is going to make a huge difference in the way I do things in the future. So let's go ahead. Nice clean cut. Nice and smooth. No burn marks. Fantastic. Uh, let's find some PVC to play with. All right, I've got a piece of thin wall angle iron. We're using our supplied little bracket here to hold it. I use these a lot for feathers as well as welding projects. And so let's see how it handles it. Nice clean cut. 
If you look here on this piece of uh, angle iron, you know, usually when you're using an abrasive saw or you're using an angle grinder, you get this big blob of stuff in here, you know, that you got to file out or clean out. It's just non-existent here. Nice and clean, as was the rest of the work. Fantastic. All right, one of the last tests we're going to do here is this is a reclaimed 2x4 that has some nails here in the end of it. I actually drove these nails in for this purpose. Uh, as many of you know that do any kind of work with reclaimed wood, you never know when you're going to run across a nail in the middle of a board and it will dull your skill saw right off the bat. So pretty sure this is going to handle it like a pro, but let's give it a go and see. No problem at all. I know I said the wood would be the last test, but let's go ahead and try this piece of old electrical conduit out. That was a pretty thick piece. I said minimal cleanup work. Very pleased. All right, well, there you go, folks. I want to tell you that this is going to open the door to a whole lot more projects in the future for me, and it's also going to be a huge asset in many of the things that I plan on doing moving forward. I want to thank the folks over at Evolution Power Tools for sending this out, letting me check it out. Uh, if you guys would like to get yourself one of these, head over, over to evolutionpowertools.com. Uh, if you're there, check out, they have a lot of other tools as well. Uh, when you get to your shopping cart, if you put the promo code in Mystic Mountain Forge, uh, you'll get a 5% discount on your order, and I'll get a little kickback to help things here as well. And so, with that being said, I appreciate you watching. I'll also have a link down in the description for that as well. I appreciate you watching. If you would hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell, notify me of this content as it posts, and I'll catch you on the next one. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.